Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Moan. We're here today doing a little bit of a Track IR 5 break-in. I finally got my Track IR in and decided that I was going to try like 60 million different games before I decided which one I just wanted to sit down and get a little bit more comfortable with uh, Track IR with. And that ended up being Arma 3 just because it's one of the easiest to sort of plug and play with the Track IR. Elite Dangerous requires a little bit of work. Uh, my DCS is just a mess in general in terms of dealing with my Hotas, so... Um, yeah... Arma ended up taking the cake, so let's, we're going to do a little bit of flying, we're going to do a little bit of ground combat, we're pretty much just messing around with the showcases and just generally have a little bit of a chat about head tracking and why I think it's important to uh, video games in general and why I wish it wouldn't have taken me so long to get a track IR. It's just stupid to not purchase one. I mean, honestly, if you own a PC and you play any sort of game that will support head tracking, you should get a track, I mean, you should just, you should have it. It's that simple. There's just no reason not to. It is definitely something you have to train your head. You have to become very comfortable with it. But uh, once you do, it is a greatly enhanced experience to any game, especially first-person ones. Of course, that's mainly where head tracking is used. Um, and this is something I've talked about in the past in terms of consoles. You know, the Xbox One and the Xbox 360, specifically having the power of the Kinect and having it being so underutilized, uh, because you know, using that for head tracking could just be a phenomenal way to enhance a console gaming experience, especially a first-person one. Uh, Arma, of course, has always used head tracking. It was one of the original titles to use the Track IR technology. Uh, DCS is big for head tracking. It's almost required to have a head tracking device to play DCS. It's very difficult to do so otherwise. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can engage some targets here. Looks like they're right up on the other side of this ridge. Let's try and gain a little bit of altitude. I am not currently using the zoom on the uh, track air. Those of you who are familiar with track air may notice that. I'm not a huge fan of it, if I'm honest. Uh, I'm just not used to it yet, I guess, is the big thing. And I do sit a little bit, maybe possibly too close. I might have to do some tweaking to my screen to alter that. But let's see what we can do here. This is definitely going to be a difficult <laughs> learning experience. main issue is I'm having trouble flying actually oh and we touched down that's a crash landing for us <laughs> wait wait we can still take him out uh, we should have used some of our daggers mission failed all right I didn't want to spend too much time with the helicopters because to be honest I'm just having, I'm so out of tune for flying in general with this game. It's it's atrociously pathetic. So uh, let's say we actually just get on the ground and mess around a little bit with, with uh, some combat. What do we got here? We can do some commanding. We got some combined arms, helicopters, vehicles. We can do scuba. Yeah, let's do the scuba one. The scuba one's always quite a bit of fun. It'd be a good way to mess around with some of the head tracking. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the track IR5. For those of you who are completely unaware of what head tracking actually is, uh, it's basically a small camera or sensor that goes on the top of your monitor. You then wear an array of, of, of sensors or LEDs that that camera then can pick up and track the placement of your head. That translates to in-game head movement, which makes, you know, gives me the ability to do things like this. I can look over my shoulder, I can look up, I can look down, I can look at this guy. The thing that's so great about it, apart from the immersion factor, is the ability to add um, head movement while doing multiple things. So, for example, I'm running this way, I want to check my left. Okay, I'm still continuing along this path, still checking my left, checking my right. You know, it gives you that real-world sense of awareness in a first-person game, specifically in a simulator or a heavy, you know, mil-sim type experience like Arma, that is a very beneficial tool. And in something like DCS, it is, again, almost a required tool that is just going to make the game much much more enjoyable apart from the immersion factor this is something that is really big for the latest version of the oculus rift actually is the fact that it does in fact have that integration um you know with the head tracking you're not just you don't just have the you know, the oculus on it. it actually has you know sensors that the camera for the oculus can then track and give you in-game head tracking through the oculus so pretty cool stuff for sure can do a little bit of backward swimming here. We can look around. Let's go ahead and continue on to our objective. So, um, but yeah, head tracking is something that was introduced. I mean, it's got to be going back, <laughs> uh, maybe even ten years now. 
uh, when the very first sort of head tracking devices started becoming a thing. And I remember actually seeing them demonstrated with Operation Flashpoint or the original Arma. It was one or the other. It's so long that I, I just can't even remember. And being completely blown away by that, a lot of you might remember, you know, the sort of the sensors on the on the hat type thing, which is still a way you can do it. I have the track clip, which goes on my headset because I don't like wearing hats. But um, yeah, just very, very cool piece of technology. And very useful for a wide variety of games. Racing games is another another element where head tracking can be a very very useful thing for those of you who maybe play some Assetto Corsa. Uh, you know, even games like Grid or F1, you know, can use head tracking. And if you take the time to sort of set it up, I'd say that's the biggest downfall currently with something like head tracking is much like setting up a Hotas or all these other extra things and any sort of these sim based experiences. It requires some time little bit of technical knowledge to maybe get some xml files or you know whatever you need to do to get going but once you get it going the reward definitely greatly outweighs any sort of frustration that may have been had while trying to set up the whole situation so i really cannot recommend it enough that's all i have to say let's shoot some fish quickly i think i killed him i've killed the fish can we, can we just go to the shore and eat him now? That's that's what I'm down for. Let's just eat some fish. <laughs> Let's go ahead and disable this mine. Um, and of course, in a game like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen, head tracking, you know, if you're not running an Oculus, is going to be you know, just a massive increase to the experience. I'm really excited to get this running with Elite Dangerous. I haven't had the time to mess around with it. It does require a little bit of effort right now. Um, but once I get it going in Elite, very going to be very, very exciting. And we'll definitely be doing some some combat, some flight with the head tracking on that, getting used to it, and just uh, generally messing around and having a good time in that. I'm not sure if people have the track hour working inside of Star Citizen right now. I, I know with the way people are technology-wise and, you know, modders, I'm sure someone has managed to get it working in Star Citizen, but, uh, again, that's going to be another place where it's going to be extra beneficial. Um, and in terms, to maybe to describe to people who don't understand actually how important the tactical um, benefit of something like track hour is, imagine yourself... In a combat situation in Star Citizen, you know, a boarding combat situation um, where one player it just has rigid first person controls, you know, they they pretty much can only look where their gun is pointed. That's all the benefit they have. They're in a, in a hallway that also has, you know, a back entrance. They're trying to defend one entrance, but the possibility of an enemy coming down the other hallway is very likely. They would have to rotate their entire body. It doesn't matter how fast you're, you know, wow, that's a really close up of that fish. It doesn't matter how fast or how twitch you are. The person who can instead just turn their head, look over their shoulder, you know, obviously has a pretty big advantage in that situation. And, of course, it carries over, uh, you know, through a variety of other tactical situations where it's definitely going to be beneficial. Let's defuse this mine. Mine number two has been deactivated. We have one more mine. I always thought that this was a prime example of why uh, Scuba wasn't really going to go anywhere inside of Arma 3 until Zeus came along. And then you started to have a little bit of fun with it. But there just wasn't enough done, in my opinion to really make scuba seem like a meaningful thing. I think the biggest issue is that, let's face it, being underwater, not much going on. You really would have to kind of take it to a Hollywood level, put a large, like, abandoned ship where you're scuba diving through it to add any sort of interesting combat. It does create a nice moment, though. Um, but, again, <laughs> it's not something you see people using all the time, uh, you know, in scenarios. It can, it can, for the most part, be a kind of frustrating experience. One more mine to deactivate. And that is all three of them. Saving game. That was an interesting lighting effect there. And now I believe we're going to be making our way to the shore. To acquire an AA launcher. Let's see just how far we are from the shore. Hopefully we don't reveal ourselves for too long. Okay, there it is. So we push up this left side, I've done several times. There is actually a uh, soldier, I believe, with an AA launcher. We can pretty much kill him. Or it's in one of those vehicles nearby. Take that thing out and then use it to basically destroy whatever target we have to destroy. Whatever nonsense they want us to blow up, all James Bondy here. Um, and of course, again, for those of you who aren't familiar with track art, it's ridiculous the amount of um, customization you have with things like, you know, yaw and pitch and head rolling. All of those have their own curves that you can modify. Not just stuff you can mess around with it with inside of the track IR program, but most games uh, heavily support modification. If they support track IR in general, you'll be allowed to change the curves and the sensitivity and the speed and the dead zone and things like that. So you can make it 
a little bit more user friendly and you, know, you can kind of set it up for your individual use. And of course, there is a ton of like pre made config files out there for Track IR. So, any game that you can play with Track IR, I can guarantee you can go to the forums and you'll find like 60 or 70 configuration files by other people who use Track IR on a daily basis. You can download theirs, find one you like if you're not really into making your own. And boom, there you go. Man, this is like the longest scuba dive session ever. All right, come on. We're right at the shore. Right there. Just make it on up. We'll see what we have in our inventory. I don't actually remember if they give us too much good stuff inside this. I think this is pretty much all we're carrying. We got a mine detector. That's about it. That basically allowed us to disable those mines in the water there. We are exhausted at this point, though, from swimming infinitely because of the wonderful new Arma 3 stamina system, which I have a very large love-hate relationship with. Let's go prone here. Just lay down for a second. Take a look at our map quickly, kind of get an idea where we are. We should be roughly in this area here. So we had our three deactivations. Uh, they want us to take down that boat that was just showing up. And we also have Camp Tempest. This is basically where we're supposed to find our um, our rocket launcher somewhere inside this base. But of course, we're going to be very diff very careful here. So I'm completely unaware of where we have any targets. Trying to remember back to the few times I played this, I do believe there was actually a unit up on this ridge somewhere. Just play it very cautiously. I mean, the worst part about all this is we don't actually have a suppressed weapon. I don't, I don't think our PD-7 is for suppressed. Oh, it is. Okay. Let's see if we can use this. We'll go all solid snake on this situation. Because as soon as we fire that, uh, fire that underwater, whatever the hell that thing's called, I can't remember the name of it, that's going to give away our position for sure. Cool thing with the track hour, you can see we got a, we got a little bit of a lean we can actually do there. Very very nice. You know, just a small peak. You get that really incremental peak that you can't actually get in any other um, any other you know leaning mechanic inside of Arma by default. I have a feeling this is gonna end really poorly, but we're gonna snake our way down here. We all know how uh, pinpoint the Arma AI can be at times, so. We can just make it down very carefully to some sort of solid cover and assess the situation further. We already got a... This actually looks really dead. Where is everybody? I'm trying to point out targets here. I just don't see a soul yet. Okay, we got a guy in the distance. One target. Keep our eyes open here. Made it down to some decent cover here. We have no targets on the docks. Two targets in the distance. We're definitely not going to be able to engage them from here with the pistol. Two targets right here. We're going to try and drop them quickly. Wasn't exactly the most successful. Uh... We did manage to drop those two. Let's 
quickly access the inventory. Let's grab this launcher. Switch to our primary. Go full auto. Oh, and that's the end of us. <laughs> I've never completed that freaking mission. Not once. It's just so damn arma. I was just, I mean, let's admit, it was a poor tactical decision. Should have never actually rushed him. It's actually eliminated all of the ones that I've completed now that I look at these. That's kind of sad, but what are you going to do? I will go ahead and take a look at one more. We'll mess around with some of the fixed wing stuff. Of course, flying jets with a head tracking device to me is like the epitome of what head tracking should be used for. Not really. It's just, you know, what I think of when I think of head tracking. Head tracking and flying spaceships. Ships. Planes. Things that fly in the sky. <laughs> Um, but as I was saying, you know, in terms of head tracking being under underutilized thing, I mean, it's been around for so long now, and it's gotten so efficient and just so useful and so tweakable, and it's just so good. I mean, it really is so good at this point. I hate that we don't see it in more titles. Um, Alien Isolation, why not have head tracking? You know, Amnesia, head tracking. It is just an, an immersion factor at that point for most of those games. Is it going to, It's you know, is it going to drastically change the way you play the game? No, but it's definitely going to increase... The enjoyment, it's its, oh, it's just going to make it better. Okay, I guess I'm going to take this. We're going to go drive over to our vehicle. Um, but I, I like using Arma 3 actually though, to demonstrate the usefulness of the track hour because if there's a game where you spend more time using the head look, I mean, tell me about it because Arma 3 is that game. Um, you guys will notice when I'm playing, you know, before I had the track hour, I'm always using a head look. Always. Non-stop. It's just a never-ending thing for me. Okay, so we're here. Oh, we gotta grab our gear. So we got vermin, we got a pilot's helmet. Steerable parachute, definitely need one of those. We got some first aid kits. Uh, we'll grab a smoke grenade, smoke grenade, and a couple chem lights. And I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and get inside of our aircraft. Do a little bit of flying. Let's go flying. Can't say we'll actually complete any sort of objective or do anything useful while we're flying this, but we'll have a good time. And we'll learn a little bit about our head tracking, getting comfortable with it. Avenger 1, starting engine. All systems functional. Ordinance is ready and armed. Understood, Avenger. You have permission to take off. Sticky keys, you're so silly. All right, let's make our way to the runway. Oh, sure, do you miss my hot toss right now? Smashing on the shift key as the throttle isn't the most efficient way to throttle up a plane. All right. I'm probably one of the only people in the world who doesn't realize that I should just disable sticky keys. Alright, let's uh, let's try not to enable sticky keys. Need to decrease throttle here. <laughs> uh, this is really embarrassing. Alright, we're doing alright. Runway 2. This is runway 1. Making our way to the second runway. Looks like we got another fellow jet down over there. All right. Uh, in terms of flying jets, I mean, obvious uses the head tracking system. You know, it's just situational awareness, especially in a dogfight.
All right. Let's see where we're going here. Here's our convoy. Set a basic waypoint marker, just to get a general idea of which direction we're heading. It also frees up if you fly with mouse and keyboard. Head tracking, you know, for me, I would um, pretty much have my mouse button set normally for the head look, and I'd have to toggle that, which means that I lost control of the aircraft, apart from using my keyboard. Um, but this means I can use the mouse for full control in this direction, and then just use my head for looking and use the keys in combination. So I have a little bit more control in terms of, you know, just flying the aircraft while still maintaining that situational awareness. What do we have? We got some macers, streakers, got a couple bombs. I, I'm not that good at flying in this game. At least not when it comes to intercepting things, let's be honest here. They want me to intercept a helicopter, of all things. It's about, let's say, say 8.4 kilometers out? 8.4 out, roughly? I guess he is on the way. Anti-air short range. Let's go ahead and make use of those. Let's just have targets on the ground over here. All right, yeah, let's just targets on the ground. Not our primary objective, to say the least. Let's just roll out of this area. Um, DCS is something I'm looking into getting into though a little bit more heavily. I was really waiting on my track air. I do have the A10C um, add-on and uh, it's just so much detail in terms of starting up the ship and all of the process that you get to go through. Uh, it's pretty freaking epic, but definitely going to take a little bit of time to get my HOTAS set up as well as my track air for that. But once I do, um, I think I'll make some videos on that. I think you guys would enjoy that kind of stuff. I think simulation type games are really great fun to watch if you're into them and they're even more fun to watch if you're not into them because i understand the entry barrier uh, for games of that nature can be uh, very very high it's not something you can kind of just casually hop into and be like oh, i'm just gonna learn how to play dcs you know in 20 minutes no it's not like that at all um, so it is an enjoyable thing to actually watch those types of games that's why i watch frugal sim which if you guys have no idea who frugal sim is can't recommend his channel enough. I'll have it linked in the description below. Go check it out. Pretty cool dude. And he plays some really awesome hardcore sim stuff. Flight sims. Alright, 1.4 out to the helicopter. You can see it's actually above us there. Down at my keyboard. That was a failed lock. I'm sure, I actually... Don't even remember what the lock on button in this game is. There we go. Terrible lock. All right, let's just swing around. We're actually just gonna try and hit him head on with some cannon fire. Oh, <laughs> we hit him. I was like, oh, yeah, we hit him. No. I mean, it has to end, right? It's only right if it ends in a wonderful, terrible Arma 3 crash. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. Just spending some time breaking in the track IR here. If you guys have any more questions about track IR, uh, what it is, or anything like that, I'll have the website linked in the description below. Again, sim games in general man there's just something about them they're they're so much fun and I, I think a part of that is that they're always looking to implement these really unique um ways to play a game like the track ir check out frugal sim i'll have his channel linked in the description below and i'll see you guys in the next one